Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help to tell the story of the 20th century. In an attempt to control the Colorado River's flooding and provide water to arid regions of California and Arizona, the U.S. government began construction on Hoover Dam in 1931. One of the largest man-made structures in the world when it opened in 1936, the project employed over 21,000 workers and was completed two years ahead of schedule. Next, a 1955 Department of the Interior film about the planning and building of Hoover Dam. The story of Hoover Dam explains the engineering feats necessary for construction and promotes economic and recreational benefits provided by the structure. In 1930, President Herbert Hoover, for whom the dam is named, signed the appropriation bill to begin construction. Under a contract awarded in March 1931 to six companies incorporated, a combine of six major construction firms, men and machines went to work to build this dam of unprecedented size, this modern civil engineering wonder. Reclamation engineers rushed to completion specifications and design drawings. Crews at the dam site completed their surveys and investigations. The thunder of man's determination to conquer the Colorado reverberated between the sheer cliffs of Black Canyon as construction got underway. The first major task was to divert the river around the dam site. To do this, four tunnels, two on each side, were drilled through the canyon walls. Each 56 feet in diameter, they averaged 4,000 feet in length. Drill holes were packed with dynamite and blasted. After each explosion, shovels and trucks entered the tunnels, mucked out the shattered rock, and dumped it in nearby gulches. Explosions rocked the canyon almost daily for two years before actual placing of concrete in the dam began. Acrobatic workmen called high scalers prepared the canyon walls for each blast. Suspended on ropes, they drilled holes in the rock and loaded them with dynamite. After each explosion, these daredevils swarmed over the cliffs, prying loose rock and clearing the walls of debris. November 1932, the Colorado River was diverted. Under control for the first time in its history, the river flowed around and past the site. Men and trucks dumped an earthen rock embankment across the canyon below the tunnel openings, forcing the river from its age-old bed through the huge diversion tubes. A second earth and rock dam was thrown across the river above the tunnel outlets downstream, keeping water from backing into the foundation area. Isolated and protected from the river by the two coffer dams, the site was pumped dry. Men and machines dug 135 feet below the old river level to reach bedrock for the dam's foundation, excavating over two million cubic yards of rock, earth, and sand. As cleanup of the dam site exposed the ancient bed of the Colorado River, geologists read the history of what happened ages ago. Workmen cleaned and prepared bedrock surfaces to receive the first concrete, assuring utmost stability for Hoover Dam's foundation. From the mixing plants, concrete was dispatched to all points of construction. Nine anchored aerial cableways spanning the canyon from rim to rim lowered the concrete into the forms and handled other supplies and equipment as well. As the first bucket of concrete settled into its foundation on June 6, 1933, Hoover Dam began its rise from the depths of Black Canyon. Hoover Dam has pointed the way to the fullest utilization of the Colorado River's resources. Truly, a modern civil engineering wonder.